Today, I'm excited to announce that my new HX Stomp preset pack is out, as well as a pack of custom IRs. If you've seen some of my previous videos, you know that I have been comparing the HX Stomp to the actual amps. That's kind of how I went about making this preset pack. I dove in even further than I did in my initial videos to get the preset sounding as close to the real amps as possible. I also created custom IRs um, using a lot of different microphones and a lot of different speakers because I feel like this really takes things up a notch in the HX Stomp and gets the amps sounding even better. Today in this video, we're gonna take a listen to a demo using those presets, but I'm also gonna tell you guys a little more about each of the amps, uh, some stories behind the amps and how I kind of came about um, finding them and how I've used them over the years. Again, thanks for watching. Let's get into it. We'll start out with my 1972 Fender Deluxe Reverb. This amp has been blackface modded, it's 22 watts, two 6v6s, legendary amps that have been used by everyone from the Beatles to countless country records, um, even some Steely Dan tunes. It's got a classic Fender sound, great for cleans, but also killer when you crank it up. I found this particular amp through a luthier friend of mine. Um, I was over at his house having a guitar worked on and he had this one and a one very similar to it that was a few years older that he was selling for a friend. I plugged into both of them and uh, it was crazy how different they sounded. They had the exact same speaker in it. At the time it had a Cannabis Rex in it made by Eminence and um, they sounded very different. This one was very open and full. The other one was much more mid-rangey. They both sounded great, but this kind of sounded more like the typical Fender Deluxe sound that, that people go for. I found with this amp that I really love putting a British style speaker in it and cranking it up. You really get some great overdrive tones. It's not your typical Fender tone, but it is a great sound. Kind of the magic setting on a deluxe reverb is turning it up around four or four and a half, turning the bass either all the way down or almost all the way down, and then turning the treble up to suit. Um, that's a, always a good starting point on a Fender deluxe reverb. You're just starting to get into a little breakup, um, but it still stays pretty clean when you back off um, playing as hard or, or back off the volume on your guitar. Next, we're gonna talk about my 1994 Matchless C30. I've had this amp for well over a decade. It's been all around the US with me. Countless shows, um, rode in the back of a trailer in an ATA case for years. I've never had a single issue with the amp. It's always delivered. Other than some routine maintenance of changing out the tubes, um, I've not had to do anything else to it. It's just rock solid built like a tank. So Matchless started out in 1989. They're kind of known as one of the first boutique amp builders. This was kind of their flagship model. It's modeled after a Vox style amp. The left side with volume, bass, and treble is kind of their, your typical AC30 top boost type of thing. Um, and then your second channel here is the EF86 channel. The preamp tube is an EF86 which is a higher gain tube, not necessarily gainier as in um, what we think of as overdrive or, you know, like a, a souped up hot rotted Marshall or something like that. Um, it just has more level or more gain. On this channel, we've got a volume control and then this tone switch, which really just kind of controls the amount of bass in the circuit. Obviously it changes mid range and that kind of thing too, but um, Pretty simple kind of setup here, but just a really great sound. That's modeled after um, kind of an AC15 type thing or an early AC30. Over here, we've got the cut and the master. The master can be disengaged by pushing it in. The cut actually works backwards so that as you turn it up, you're actually cutting out the high frequencies. These amps are typically known for their great clean sounds or cleanish sounds that are really bright and just sit really well in a mix and help you cut through. They also have some great overdrive sounds that are good for just kind of classic sounding rock stuff or blues, um, even kind of like modern alternative rock. They're just, they have a really great overdrive sound on both channels. This amp I got well over a decade ago. I actually found a guy online selling this amp. Before I had this amp, I had a Bad Cat Black Cat, which is 
essentially the same amp um, and that was in a 212 combo it was so heavy and i knew if i put it in a case that i just wasn't even going to be able to move it very well or pick it up so i was kind of looking for something smaller this one came up and the guy was selling it in a 112 combo and he had the head case which is what you see here that has given me some options over the years as well as making it a little more portable when i just want to take the 112 combo out Next, we're going to talk about the Marshall 2204. This is actually a friend of mine, Chris Stalkups, um, who you might have seen uh, referenced in some other videos, including uh, my first vlog that I did a few weeks ago. I borrowed this from Chris. It's a great amp. Um, I think the story goes that he found this in a pawn shop for like 250 bucks, um, something ridiculous. They go for probably... Um, I think like 15 to two grand now, depending on what shape they're in. Obviously this one's not in great shape, but it still sounds amazing. These later became known as a JCM 800. Um, I will link some stuff in the description that has a little bit more information about them. Again, I'm not super familiar with this amp as I've just been borrowing it, but um, this, the really cool thing about this amp that most people don't attribute to Marshall's is the clean sound. It has a really nice um, kind of chimey or clean sound. Um, it's not super clean. It's a little dirty, but really not what I attribute to a, a classic Marshall sound, but a really great usable sound. Obviously, it does a higher gain thing. It overdrives pretty easily, and you plug a Les Paul into this thing, and then you just kind of have to shred. I'm not really a shredder. I can't really do that super well, but um, I at least try when I plug into this thing because it sounds so good. So those are the amps. Now we're gonna take a listen to a little demo that I made with the HX Stomp presets that I made from these amps. All of those presets are running through the IRs that I made. Um, a variety of different speakers, including a Greenback, a Classic Lead 80, Alnico Gold. Um, I think there is a the Cannabis Rex, which is a hemp cone speaker from Eminence, a Eminence Texas Heat, and an Eminence Private Jack. All of those speakers have been mic'd up with different mics, including 57, SM7, a Roller 121, a Lawson 47 tube mic, and a Telefunken M81. All of those IRs are available in my IR pack. Um, and then when you buy the HX Stomp presets, there are six of the IRs that come with that as well, and they're assigned to the different presets. Let's go ahead and jump into that, and we'll take a listen. Once again, thanks for watching. Let me know what you think in the comments and be sure to check out my new HX Stomp preset pack and the IRs. Until next time, I'll see you out there.